Welcome fans to another episode of The Spread. I am your host, Jim Sella, in studio with J Dash and Big Easy. Finally, all three of us back together again for the first time in a long time. Even though we all see each other, we're just too lazy to do anything. Believe it. Huh. So what's wrong with the Buckos? They're garbage. Seven seven and twenty or what they they lost today? They lost today. Well they were seven and twenty before this four game stand, right? And they're last I, I don't really somewhere know. around there. But they're bad right now. They're just they're having a rough go. Well but. they might have turned it around in this last series. There are a couple hope. things that got going there, but Liriano got blown up. Yeah, we'll talk about Liriano here in a little bit. I want to talk about seven things that can get the Pirates back on track, though. And uh, we're going to start from the least important to the most important. Can we can we say they should have not made a move in the offseason? Does that count? W- what do you mean? I don't think they should have traded Neil Walker. Well, that Neil Walker I, has nothing to do with why they're struggling. J- Josh Harrison has been very good this season. Oh, I'm not saying he hasn't played. I'm just for depth reasons. They're, they're, oh, they're their struggling. depth offensively is ridiculous, man. I'm telling you, their offense is fine right now. The, but they're also the, near the top of the league in uh, runners left on base. And I just well, think here's what happens, man. So when you're getting Neil Walker, is what no, listen. When you're scoring getting. runs, the inning's always going to end. So you're gonna if you're well, having guys on base and the inning ends, it's not always terrible. Yeah, they're leaving a lot of guys on base, but they're also scoring runs too. The inning's always going to end. If you don't hit a home run before it ends, then there's going to be guys left on base because they are getting a guys a, a ton of guys on base because they do have that high OBP. I still just like Neil. Okay, well, that's fine. I mean, you can like Neil Walker all you want. You can root for him for the Mets, man. There's no problem with that either. I hate the Mets. But the least important thing I think they have to do is call up Tyler Glass now. At some point, Tyler Glass now is going to get called up. Right now, I don't think it's the best time for him. I mean, he's pitching pretty well in the minor leagues. He, he hasn't let up a hit in his last two outings, but he also walked 11 people. Now, that's great and everything, but when you go to the big leagues, you're going to get hit around a little bit more than that, and those walks are going to kill you. Liriano showed it, showed it this season so far. I mean, he's walking too many people, and then someone comes up with the big hit. Now, it wouldn't be too bad for Liriano if he wasn't walking these people because the big hit wouldn't be that big if it was just a solo shot or something like that. But, yeah, at some point they're going to have to get Tyler Glass now in this rotation. But, I mean, I don't know where it's going to happen at. I mean. Nice and Locke, they both had their up and downs, but I don't think they've been bad enough where they got to come out of the rotation. Liriano, he's been the worst in this rotation, and he's one of those guys. I mean, when you give those big contracts, you're kind of stuck with them in the rotation. Then you got the two young guys in Tyon and Cool, and I like both of them right now, and I want to see them moving forward. I don't know if Cool's going to start in this rotation the rest of the season or not, though. He may come out when Cole returns. I heard John Parada, I think he's for the Beaver County Times or the Trib, one of the two, but I heard him at about 5.30 today say that the Pirates are afraid to bring Glass now up, maybe afraid the wrong word, hesitant to bring Glass now up right now because of all the walks and that just his personality, he doesn't have that dominant, like, you know, puff your chest out, I'm an all-star kind of guy. Yeah, he's the opposite of Cole, really. They they were saying this guy grew nine inches between his sophomore and junior year. Literally, he was 5'11 at the end of his sophomore year, and then he was 6'8 at the beginning of his junior year. So he was just an average player for most of his life until he got to be that size when he really started dominating. So he hasn't really realized how good he is. So it makes him sometimes hesitant to throw the ball in the strike zone and if you walk, you know, four or five batters, like you said, in the major leagues, plus you're going to give up some hits because you're not going to keep people no hit through six, seven out- innings every outing. It's just going to get a little shaky. And with his shy, you know, just kind of ho hum personality, they don't want to. You're shake right. His he confidence. wasn't. He wasn't even that big of a prospect when he was first drafted. He was a round five pick. But he does have a 160 ERA, 100 strikeouts in 84 innings. Only has. 49 hits allowed in those 84 innings, but 47 walks, and that is going to get you when you take the next step to the bigs, and you don't want to compound your issues by calling them up too early and then facing better competition. Those walks are still going to be there if you uh, do it right now, and the the hits are going to come too. He's not going to throw two no-hitters in a row. Not unless he's, uh, what's his name for the Nationals? Scherzer? Yeah. Dude almost did it. All right, the next thing that can get this team back on track 
get Marte and Polanco healthy. That Neither one of them are healthy right now. Marte's missed some time during this losing streak. Polanco's missed time more recently. They got through this Dodger series pretty well without Polanco. But these are their best two hitters. Marte and Polanco have been killing it this year. McCutcheon, you always come into the season thinking he's an MVP candidate. Really, this year, it would be Marte or Polanco if you're going to take a Pittsburgh Pirate. LVP for Kutch right now. <laughs> well, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, you look in around the, the league. In the Pirate lineup, I mean. Yeah, in the Pirate lineup, definitely. But you look around the league, man. I, a oh, lot yeah. of teams would oh, still take Oh, he's definitely not he's garbage. Doing. He's just, for the Pirates, he's definitely their least valuable player right now. But Marte, he's hitting 326 with the 366 on base, has six jacks right now. The one thing about him, everybody says he's overtaken Kutch as the MVP candidate in this lineup. The one thing I don't like about Marte is he never takes the walk. And really, it, on base percentage is a big deal when it comes to MVP. Now, his on base percentage, like I said, 366, so it still isn't bad because he's hitting so well. But it's hard for a guy that doesn't take walks to win an MVP like that, and I really don't see it happening with him. I think Polanco would have a better shot. But right now, both of these guys not quite healthy, and it would be huge to have these guys. I mean, they're sitting Polanco right now. I think they sat him the last three games. I think he had a pinch hit the past two games. So when he comes back, hopefully he's fully healthy and ready to go. And I'd like to see Marte maybe get a couple more days down if he's not fully healthy because when they are, I mean, these are the two guys that have this lineup rolling, really. Maybe they should play walk like an Egyptian every time Marte comes up so he remembers to look for it. Well, yeah, Marte's just not that type of player, man. He's a free swinger. He's kind of like Vlad Guerrero. Remember him? He had just swing at any pitch that came his way, but it crush it. Vlad Guerrero swung the freaking bat like a golf club. The next thing, play Jung Ho Gung more often. Mm, I'm hearing that's not going to happen. They're yeah, I, they're, I get it, man. They I guess afraid of his condition. <sighs> Uh, they're well, just not, worried because he didn't have a whole off season. To exactly. Get yeah. I, I mean, the I see the reasons it. why they're doing it, man. But I mean, he's been their biggest power bat this season. He has the most home runs on the team, doesn't he? No, Kutch actually has twelve now. He had a two home run oh, game okay. the other day, so he overtakes him. But then the it is Jung Ho right after him with eleven home runs, and he's did that in one hundred and forty at bats. So I mean, over a course of a full season, that's an average of. 40 home runs so he's their biggest power bat and he's a good third baseman right now he's only hitting 257 but he hasn't got as many at bats as the rest of these guys so it's going up and down pretty quick with him so if he has a big game it would go right back up but I, I get it freeze has been great too so it it's kind of hard to find more playing time for him in a way and like you said they're not sure about his condition right now coming off that injury and everything but Jung Ho, I mean, he is a difference maker in this lineup. And when they first brought him off the DL, it definitely showed. And I'd like to see him get more time. And you know what? To tell you the truth, David Freeze could play more first base. I'm not saying Jace has done anything wrong. Jace has been a very good player for the Pirates as well. But David Freeze has been even better. So maybe just start playing Freeze against Rady's at first base a little bit more as well because he looks good defensively at first, just like Jace does. Quick side note, easy. MLB's on pace for the most 40-plus home run hitters since the year 2000. Thank you. Thank you for that. Mad people juicing again. Yeah, there has been a lot more home runs this season. And, I mean, really, it's happened with the Pirates, too. Warming. The Pirates lost a lot of power coming into <laughs> the season, you remember. Everybody was arguing, you lose, lose Pedro, you lose Neil Walker. That That's a lot of power gone. Really, they haven't lost much power in terms of team power because everybody's picked it up a little bit. Uh, the next thing, definitely a rebound from Kutch. Now, they don't have to do all these things, but even if they improved on four of these seven things, I mean, that would be a huge turnaround. And one is a rebound from Kutch, and it looks like he we may be seeing that rebound start right now. He had a good series versus the Dodgers. You obviously got to see more than that from him, though. He's had a couple short hot streaks this season, but he had the two home run game. He had two hits today. So uh, things are looking up a little bit for Kutch. He's swinging at better pitches now. I mean, he's been swinging at pitches out of the zone a lot this season especially the high fastball it seems to get him a lot if he can just be a little bit more patient not try to do everything and just let let the pitches come to him I mean that's what makes him so great is his plate discipline and he just doesn't have it so far this season though it turned around in this series so we'll have to see if that continues or not but I mean that would be huge but again if you really think about it the first eight weeks of the season the Pittsburgh Pirates were one of the top four teams in the National League and that was without Kutch playing well at all so it's not 
completely necessary, but they got to improve in some aspects. And if it's not Kutch, it's some of these other areas. But, I mean, this would be a huge factor as well. I got a comment and a question. One, people keep saying Kutch is always a slow starter, but it isn't really a slow start because he's not been hitting well, at least, since well, September I mean, of last months. year. I mean, still, even if you go by this season, don't even worry about last season. Sometimes, who cares, like, a, about a month of last season? This season, well, it's been two three months. months. Okay, even two months, but w whatever. I mean, so, I mean, three months of the season, he's put together it's a not... lot of at bats where he, he isn't hitting the ball. Right now, well. it's a half a season, pretty much. You know what I mean? Even if you just factor in this season. So, it, it's not just a short stretch anymore. And second, well, I guess the question really is, did it, did it, Mess him up, moving him to two, or are you going to buy into that like all the people on social media? Because the way I see it is, if you're an elite MVP type player, I mean, I'm not saying you should be able to be a leadoff hitter or whatever, but you should be able to hit wherever in the lineup. Well, I mean, I looked at the numbers, and he's definitely, he's hitting like 40 points higher from the number three hole this season. It's in definitely less plate appearances. I think it's only in 46 plate appearances or something like that. So the numbers are there to back it up. But, I mean, you're right. I mean, you should be able to hit from anywhere. But, I mean, a lot of guys are better later in the lineup, obviously, because right. they're seeing easier pitches to hit because usually when you bat lower in the lineup, you're not quite as good of a hitter as the guys at the top or whatever. But maybe, I mean, it's possible. We've seen it with Pedro Alvarez, too. He couldn't hit in the four hole. But when you put him at five or six, he was a little bit better. Who knows? I mean, there's no way to really tell for sure. The numbers bear out that he hits better in the three hole. So I'd stick, I'd keep keep him in a three-hole, but you know what? Polanco hit better in a three-hole than he did in a two-hole as well. So, I mean, either way, you're taking a little bit of downgrade if you put one of those two guys in a two-hole right now. But, I mean, things could turn around, too. You never really know. Just get in your uh, whatever lineup position you're in, get in it, and hit the ball. Yeah. Believe Pansies. <laughs> All right, let's move to the top three things that they need to fix here. Is there going to be a drum roll playing in the background? Sure, why not if you want to? Do a drum roll. Go ahead. But Liriano, he got a rebound. Obviously, when you give a guy a contract like this, you got to keep him in the rotation. A lot of people saying move him to the bullpen. I mean, that's great and everything. Jim, I know you were saying, who are they going to put in the rotation then? I mean, you do, let's say Cole returns. You still have Cole, Tyon, Chad Cool, and Nice, Locke, and you also have Glass now you could bring up. So, I mean, in theory, you could move Liriano to the bullpen, but when you're paying this guy this much money, it's not his last year on his contract, so you're not going to be put, keeping him in the bullpen throughout this season, in the next season. I mean, you got to let this guy just stick it out, and you got to so take the, the bruises, pretty much. I mean, that's why before the season, man, everyone's saying you go out and sign five starters, you know what I mean? Have five great starters. But when they don't work out, I mean, you got to stick it out with them. Just like the Cardinals this season with Mike Leak. I mean, he hasn't pitched great, but they gave him five years, $75 million. So you got to stick it out with them. There's nothing else you can really do at this point. But he has to rebound. He's been terrible. Seven, uh, seven ERA this month, I think it is. If you remember, he was okay at the beginning of the season. I mean, he wasn't great or anything, but it, it looked like he was going to be his normal self. But he's really fallen off as of late, especially in June. And, I mean, as long as he pitches like this, it's going to be tough because he's supposed to be one of their top two pitchers, and it just isn't working out right now. Enough said with that, dude. You're beat. This is a guy, when we signed him, they said every other season with this guy, he has a great season, he has a bad season, a great season, a bad season. He comes to the Pirates, has a great season. The next year, you remember, he had a bad season to start out for the first half of the year. Then after the All-Star break, he really put it together, and it ended up being a good season. Had something like a 350 ERA or something like that, so it was still a good season. But uh, can he do it again? Obviously, he's done it in the past, so he could do it again. But, I mean, he could just keep rolling like this, too. And maybe you do have to try to move him out of the rotation somehow, but it's not a... Make him a closer. What do you... Well, make him a... I mean... They're getting rid of Melanson. If you get rid of Melanson, it's a possibility, I guess, but the, the way he walks so many guys, I don't think you want that in the ninth inning. You don't want to put a guy really on when you're uh, up two runs or something like that. Larry Honor will never be the closer. This no, that, <laughs> I would highly doubt that. Don't stop playing games here. Number two, the return of Garrett Cole. It's obvious, I mean... The rotation, they haven't been great this season, but there was a pretty long stretch there where they were pitching well. And when Cole went down, obviously, I mean, it, it's going to happen. When you're 
ace pitcher goes down. Although he wasn't pitching necessarily like an ace so far this season, he had his good outings and some poor outings, I guess. But obviously, when you lose your number one pitcher, your rotation is going to get a little bit worse, and they really need to get him back in this rotation. Garrett. He's beat. He's beat? He's coming back. He probably ruined his arm at that Penguin <laughs> game, banging on the glass when he was 16 beers deep. He's coming back like Jay Hay with a thumb injury. He's just going to be hurt all season. Dude's beat. Ow, my arm. And well, yeah, there, I wouldn't go that far. He's actually starting to throw some pitches off the mound and stuff, so he should be doing a rehab assignment pretty soon here. I mean, it's prob- probably going to be another 15 days before we see him, though. And they're all beat up. They are. Oh, they they got to get healthy. I I remember when they when well, I think it was Trevelli when went. Well, they ball every night. How, how are they going to get healthy? Forty seven. Well, that's out of thing. Forty eight days plus a double header. Yeah. See, that's the thing. They had that, a couple rain outs and the, they ended up the scheduling had them playing a, a lot of days in a row. I mean, they weren't missing. They didn't have any off days, and that hurts, especially when a couple guys get down here and there. You got to try to fight through it, and they haven't done a good job of it over the past month. And I remember, Jim, when one of these guys first went down, I was telling you, you got to fight through it and just deal with it. But then Marte went down for a little bit. Polanco went down for a little bit. Cervelli, Cole, I mean, it, it started the – the injuries started to stack up. And, I mean, it has been a little bit too much for him. So a couple of these guys, like I said, they got to get healthy. And Gary Cole's one of them. And number one on this list, I think the biggest – player they need to return is Francisco Cervelli and I've seen he's going to go on a rehab assignment in about 15 days 15 to 18 days so there's still some time for him it's probably going to be late July when he returns and I mean the Pirates had a leg up on a lot of the competition in the NL just having Cervelli because there aren't too many good hitting catchers in baseball but when he goes down I mean Stewart, he's good defensively. That's great. He went down for a little bit too, though. They had Jacob Stallings and Eric Kratz as their two catchers. And I garbage mean, and garbage. It, it, they are, dude. Yeah. I mean, Eric Kratz, he had the home run to win a game for him, and he that had, was like he, a, a blind squirrel. <laughs> well, he had a two RBI single today too, but all right. Well, two, he's yeah, two I for mean, sixty. That's what happens when you lose a catcher, though. They had a leg up. Now, when they lose Cervelli, when Stewart goes down, I mean, it really, it not only do you, you lose that advantage, I mean, you go way below other teams because you can't just go out there and find a catcher to replace someone in the middle of the season that's going to do the job that you need them to do that your starter did for you. Is this a bridge year for the Pirates, and at what point does it become one? Because Neil Huntington was actually quoted in the offseason as saying this could be a bridge year between that first core group that they built and the younger stars that they expect Yeah, I seem to be said that, and it run. makes sense. You, you think, I mean, when you're, what, they had Glass now, Tyone, Chad Cool, they have Stephen Brault, Josh Bell, Alan Hansen. So when these guys come up, I mean, Meadows it, now. It, 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 yeah, Meadows. Track. I mean, he's pure he's white. a little That's bit a while away though. All these other guys. What's his yeah, name? Adam Frazier. Yeah. Yeah, that's another one. I mean, they have a lot of guys, and when you're bringing them up and everything, there could be a transition period there. I don't think he meant we're going to go 62 and 100 no, this season. Yeah, I mean, anything. he still meant they were going to compete for the playoffs, but there was going to be. Oh, yeah, there's a, definitely all these transitions, the and there's going to be more. Year. And you, that's that's really how you can tell if you have a good team or not. If that transition, I mean, it, it, if it lasts one year, great. If it starts to last three, four, five, 20 years like the Pirates did before, the, then you, you're, you got some trouble. Hurdle's job in trouble this year if they miss the playoffs? I mean, he, no. he's – no, I wouldn't say so, no. It's but, not him. No, well, dude, he makes some bad decisions, man. I get tired of the decisions he makes. And, I mean, he gives these guys – I mean, I would say I'm not putting Caminero in, Jared Hughes in right now, no matter what. I'm going to find another player to pitch at this point. I mean, he could have done it today. They lost, They were up 4-3 when they brought Liriano out of the game. Liriano had two runners, put two runners on base. They bring in Jared Hughes, who has not been pitching well at all. Nicasio pitched well yesterday. If he wanted to rest him, fine. But Nicasio pitched three innings after that, three shutout innings. Why not just pitch Nicasio there after that and then try to fill in after that? I just don't understand why you're pitching these guys in these important situations. Well, he's been making questionable calls for the last, for the last whatever, five, I think six years. This year, it's getting worse. Uh, but a couple things, if needed. I mean, if you need something offensively, you still got Josh Bell and Allen Hansen in the minor leagues. But really, man, you look. They got their eight starters. You got David Freeze, Matt Joyce, Sean Rodriguez, 
Adam Frazier. All these guys are playing well right now. Frazier played well in the minor leagues, and he's stepped up so far in the bigs. And then you have Eric Kratz as your backup catcher. Obviously, there's nothing you can do about that. You have to have the backup catcher, and you're not going to just go out and have a good one when your starter goes down. So, I mean, really, the offense doesn't need much, and there really isn't too much room for Josh Bell right now unless they fall out of the race or something. Start trading some of these guys like a uh, Joyce or a Freeze, Jay, so you could do. Then you can call up Josh Bell and get him in the lineup or whatever. But that's the seven things they that could get this team back on track. You do four of them, this team's going to go right back up to one of the top four or five teams in the National League. I'm, if not, I mean, they're going to keep struggling. You heard it here first, folks. If they do all seven dash guarantees, a World Series victory. You're damn right. Buckos will win a hundred games. Nah, that's just not happening. <laughs> Anything else for the fans? No. All right, wrap it up. Fans, follow us on Twitter at bet underscore the spread. Follow me on Twitter at bet Jim the win. Check out the Facebook page at facebook.com slash bet the spread. Keep coming back to YouTube for the best Bucko coverage out there. Peace.